Hey, friends, Steve Keating. Uh, before we get into the show, I wanted to mention that Team has supported this particular podcast, and I'm really grateful for them reaching out to us. And they mentioned that they would like to give uh, members of the Myopia podcast community a $250 discount off of their first virtual assistant. If you have not considered uh, bringing in a virtual team, uh, I can attest to how wonderful it is. Over the last two years, we brought in uh, about 10 team members onto our uh, practice. We've used different staffing services and we've had issues over the years with our staff not getting paid, having issues here or there, issues with the communication. And that has been really taken care of since we've joined up with team and their, uh, their group of virtual people. Uh, it's been fantastic and I would highly recommend that you consider doing it for your office. They can do things by answer the phone for you. They can uh, check uh, insurances. They can give patients calls. They can check on uh, scribing for you in the exam room and do a host of different things, particularly in the myopia community. It's great to have somebody that can be in charge of these sort of things, checking on those myopic patients, seeing how they're doing, giving them a care call after they've had orthokeratology for a day, uh, and just kind of be a right hand to you in the exam room or to your billing team or your front desk. Consider hiring team.com, H-I-R-E-T-E-E-M.com, or click the show notes to get the $250 discount when you sign up. Now back to the show. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We are uh, excited to have Jackson Lau with us today. It's good to have you, my man. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Glad to be here. Jackson has been a hero of mine over the last couple of years and the things that he's accomplishing with Euclid Vision. He's also in private practice and uh, crushing it in the myopia and uh, in, in specialty contact lens world. Um, but first, I wanted to let everybody know we are recording live from the Vision by Design 2023 meeting in Chicago. Uh, when you're listening to this, you'll be preparing for October 2nd through the 5th in Dallas, Texas. That's where you want to be putting your calendar for the Vision by Design 2024 meeting. Uh, I think Jackson and I'll probably both be at that meeting. Um, again, October 2nd through the 5th, put that on your calendar for Vision by Design 2024. Jackson, tell us a little bit about you, where you practice, and your role uh, w with Euclid now, right? Absolutely. So where do you practice? So I still practice out in the Silicon Valley area of California, right near San Francisco. And I've been there for the past seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, finished my residency in cornea and contact lenses at uh, Illinois College of Optometry, came back to the San Francisco Bay Area where I have a lot of friends and family. And so it's uh, been a booming, booming uh, myopia practice also with a cornea specialist. And so uh, about three years ago, I joined uh, Euclid Vision Corporation and it's been a really super, super exciting journey. Um, at the time, we were a much smaller company and the reason they wanted to hire me it was a new position. They wanted someone who had a bit of experience with not just Euclid as an ortho K design, but also uh, had experience with a lot of other designs. You know, they were at the time trying to make advancements, trying to improve, trying to see what the current customers were, you know, either interested in from an ortho K design standpoint or just fully myopia management standpoint. Yeah, and so. Given my experience with Euclid in the past, I had used it during residency. It was just a you know fantastic lens design altogether. You know, at the time I didn't really know the company. It was a smaller company. You just and knew the product. I just knew yeah. the product, and I knew the people were great. You know, mm -hmm. every every time I interacted with them, every time I interacted with the consultation, I knew the people were really excellent, and I knew some of the original founders just you know through some relationships. And, um, but it was a leap of faith because you're, you know, you're jumping from full-time clinical practice into a completely new role. Yeah, what the yeah. heck, yeah. you know? That's gotta be a, uh, hey honey, I'm leaving practice mm -hmm. and gonna mm -hmm. be doing this totally different thing. What, you went to school for 
you know, four years for this so you could mm-hmm. see patients and now this you're helping patients in a different way. Yep. How did this, uh, you know, conversation, this evolution, this transition take place? That's a, that's yeah. a, that's a big jump, brother. Yeah, it's, it was definitely exactly that conversation happened. <laughs> I said, hey, honey, I've been thinking. And uh, there's a lot of, let's say, we all practice optometry. We became optometrists for a certain reason. We wanted, it was the, the love of like working with people, helping people, and uh, helping people see Provide, you know, providing sight, protecting sight. These are all things that we all, I think, drew us to the profession. Right. Um, at a certain time in my life, and that was about three years ago, that was when I was starting to think about other type of, let's say, non-clinical roles where, uh, for me, um, I think I have a very inquisitive, curious mind. And when I was, not forced, but when I was seeing patients, let's say 20 patients a day, and then on top of that, you might be spending hours or so after designing specialty lenses, whether it's sclerals, corneal GPs, ortho K lenses. Uh, I didn't have enough time to really let my mind work in ways that I wanted to. Mm. It was a little bit, uh, a little bit routine in the sense that, okay, I got the hang of things. I was doing this. I've been doing this for you know seven, eight years, and I got the hang of things. And ultimately. You know, I'm the type of guy that really wants to like constantly study things. I'm constantly looking at new designs, new new structures, you know, diff- different things in all aspects of my life. Mm-hmm. And this is where, um, when I looked at the opportunity that came up with industry, um, I had asked some good friends. Um, my good friend Justin Kwan. We used to, you know, play basketball uh, back when we were at Berkeley, an undergrad, and you know, he had introduced me to you know the the roles of industry and. The main thing that you'll hear from everyone in these type of positions is that, you know, what you can do with patients in your day to day is fantastic. You know, you're touching 20, you know, eyes basically and impacting their lives, uh, uh, 20 patients a day. Um, but what you could potentially be impacting from an industry standpoint is on the order of like hundredfold. And when I learned that Euclid was so influential and impactful from an international perspective, you yeah. know, as one of the number one importers in China and Asia. And when I learned about that kind of potential impact and literally shaping the vision of, a, you know, a, either a generation, but an entire population of people, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And not that seeing 20 patients a day was not. No, but it's yeah. impacting people in a different way. Mm-hmm. Now you're impacting Mm-hmm. doctors and you're impacting uh, other things in industry mm-hmm. and, and you're making things a lot better. So mm-hmm. now in your role mm-hmm. uh, over the last couple of years, it seems to have really evolved, particularly in the last 12 months, I would say, from yep. my observation. Yep. Um, Euclid Vision uh, joined forces with Visionary Optics. Visionary Optics joined uh, Euclid. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's an aspect that you're bringing value because of a specialty contact lens fitter as well. Absolutely. But um, you and Lynette Johns have been jumping on the road and going and doing these road shows. Tell us a little bit about what these programs are that you're putting on. And, you know, if doctors get an opportunity to attend one, what are, what are the things that they learn? Yeah. So just as a little bit of background on Dr. Lynette Johns, uh, she doesn't need a full introduction. But for those who are just focused on myopia, she is the queen of scleral contact lenses. The queen. The queen. Yes. And she had taught me when I was a resident almost 10 years ago. And when the opportunity came up to, you know, my company told me, hey, we might be hiring Lynette Johns and you're going to be working with her. I was just just about to be, you know, I was so excited. And um, ever since she joined the company, we have been able to, we're, we've been partners in crime. We've been able to really, really, really work together on educational initiatives. You know, how can we teach doctors? How can we reach doctors in a way that is unlike, you know, what other companies are doing? And I think the difference in what I'm able to do with our company and some of that comes with the freedom of being a medium-sized company. We're not too large, we're not too small. So we have the resources, but we don't have a lot of the restrictions sometimes with some of the bigger corporations. So she and I can really, really influence the educational initiatives in the way that we think if we were the optometrists on the other side, how would we want to receive this information? You know, we understand companies and manufacturers, they all have 
a financial incentive. They want to sell their product, right? But how do I want to receive education yet still learn about the company in a way? So. Uh, one of the things, one of the ideas that we, you know, developed were you know, these road shows where we would offer a combined scleral lens and ortho K slash myopia uh, type of uh, educational type event, uh, free of charge. These would be, you know, in, usually starting off in major metropolitan areas and cities. And our goal was to create the best content educationally that existed. And I don't think we're too far. You know, we we've gathered some of the best images, some of the best videos. And with her, you know, years of experience and expertise, and with my, you know, half of her experience at least, um, uh, with our experience combined, we can really help doctors see the field of these major specialty contact lenses in ways that we think we're a little bit lacking. Still. Yeah, yeah. So these road shows are mm -hmm. going around the country, and, mm -hmm. and you're taking part in them. Mm -hmm. So for people who are not aware of Euclid. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's this nebulous name that, uh, you know, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, Euclid has, uh, has captured the vast majority of the number one position worldwide in orthokeratology for the most part. Uh, worldwide, it is uh, number one or number two in orthokeratology with the different lenses that they have. Um, Speak to us just a little bit about the, uh, the, the fitting philosophy and what you need to do in order to fit a lens. Tell us a little bit about the toric design and, uh, and, Absolutely. and, and so forth. Yeah, so uh, as a little bit more background, so in my practice we use five to six different ortho K designs. I'm very comfortable with trying a lot of different designs and seeing the pros and cons of each. And the reason why I was so drawn to the whole philosophy of Euclid is that, you know, our core philosophy is we want to make it simple for practitioners so that it's not a barrier of, uh, to entry uh, for fitting ortho K lenses if you want to use that modality as a myopia management treatment. So it's simple to fit. You simply provide your Ks, your RX, your horizontal visible iris diameter, your HVID. And these days people are simply providing topography images plus the prescription. And by doing that bare minimum for the neophyte doctor, they may be very, very, very comfortable to know that about 87% of the time, you're gonna get a well-fit lens without much input. Mm -hmm. Now, you're gonna have those cases where maybe that remaining 13% of the time, or if you don't select the, the best, you know, properly selected patient, they have really weird corneas, really odd prescriptions, certainly, the beauty of Euclid, uh, Euclid lenses is that you'll have the ability to make all the adjustments and the parameter uh, changes that you need with a high level of precision, whether on directly on your own, if you want to just tweak all the adjustments yourself, or if you want the consultants to help you. Mm -hmm. So I love this aspect of it because this made Euclid the most accessible design for ortho -K out there. It's one of the reasons why we believe we are doing so well. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why we're here and we have a lot of uh, doctors who are interested at Vision by Design. But just in general, I think our philosophy speaks to a lot of doctors, yeah. whether they're new or moderate to advanced. I yeah. think the design works. So uh, a couple years ago, I started tracking the use of my uh, toric lenses. And I believe at the end of 2022, we were at 50%. And I think you guys have uh, been tracking that and you're seeing that a substantial number of patients are also in toric parameters. That's a, a, a newer lens, uh, not, not new, new, but a newer lens to Euclid. Mm -hmm. um, also fit very similarly using uh, topography and consulting with the, the consultants on that. Mm -hmm. And that lens has been working pretty well as well. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So, yeah, definitely based on the, if you were to look at some of the literature, perhaps if you were to extrapolate, there could be a third of patients who may have toric shaped corneas based on the prescriptions out there. But we're finding that using Euclid toric lenses, which is just as a you know, uh, clarification, these are toric peripheries. We're not talking about any kind of front torics or any kind of back surface, uh, sorry, any kind of base curve toric or bi toric in that respect. But these are torque peripheries. Yeah. And it's absolutely critical that if eyes have uh, essentially torque shapes in the periphery, that they need a torque lens in the periphery. Yeah. 
to align properly for ortho -K to work. And, and we're largely looking at that based upon 30, 40 microns or more of elevation difference between the meridians, and that's, uh, that's happening unclear. way more often than we originally thought, and our topographies are really telling us Correct. that. Correct, yeah. correct. And I think the reason that maybe you might be seeing it in your office, and that's consistent with a lot of offices, mm -hmm. that they're having closer to 50%, if not higher, mm -hmm. uh, of using toric lenses, is that we're finding that uh, perhaps there's just uh, you know a much better fit, a much better seal for these ortho-K designs, uh, better centration, and overall that's going to provide better results. Yeah. And so we have lowered that threshold for needing uh, toric peripheries yeah. uh, to around 25 to 30 microns. Yeah. And uh, people are being fit better, people are having better results, and ultimately, you know, if doctors are happy, patients are happy, that's yeah. what we're, that's what we're yeah. here for. Another big aspect of the things that you're involved with, Euclid, is uh, future thinking and uh, research and development and so forth. And I know that you can't completely pull the curtain back and show us what's, uh, what's on the horizon, but what are some of the things that Euclid is thinking about that you think are kind of exciting that you can talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So I hope I don't get in trouble with my company when this uh, podcast <laughs> airs, but uh, so I think you hit a little bit earlier about the nebulous nature of who we are at Euclid. So I may start there. So uh, Euclid on its own is an ortho K company and that's where we started, yep. but we are actually part of a bigger umbrella company that's called Euclid Vision Group. Yeah. And within this umbrella, its platform, uh, we have more than just ortho K lenses. As you alluded to earlier, we have visionary optics, scleral lenses. Um, in other countries, uh, we've acquired uh, custom soft lenses. And so Mark Enevy is one of the premier custom soft lenses in the world. And that's a part of our umbrella. Uh, we also have um, solutions companies, yeah. uh, both in Europe and in Asia. And this is a huge need that I've been dealing with for the past couple of years. I know yeah. you've been dealing with, yep. and I talk to doctors every day and everyone's dealing with solutions issues. Uh, especially with the peroxide uh, difficulty. Mm -hmm. So within this umbrella, we have, uh, you know, companies uh, worldwide that we're hoping to eventually bring to the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the great thing about me being able to join the company early is that uh, for some reason they rely on my experience and expertise because there's not a lot of optometrists in the company. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I get to be involved with sort of shaping how we develop and release these products. And we have a amazing um, R&D department with, you know, headed by uh, Zora Fadli, but she's uh, just an amazing person. And she's basically heading the R&D projects across all these different sectors and different parts of eye, eye care. Yeah, and worldwide. So worldwide, you, worldwide. Yeah, Euclid Vision yeah. Group, yeah. Absolutely, and this is the part where it's just fascinating being able to uh, be a part of all these other aspects of eye care but in particular with ortho k you know we get to be involved with new designs yeah. we get to be involved with new materials new ways to help improve treatment improve refractive treatment improve myopia treatment uh, and again this was part of that curiosity that led me from a day-to-day -day clinical yeah. practice which you're you're doing the cutting edge stuff but that's what's available currently yeah. you know it's nice to be able to impact the cutting edge things that are not in a, you know, available yeah. today. So that's, that's what awesome. made it so beautiful for yeah. me. That's awesome. Um, lastly, mm -hmm. I uh, was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing about a paper that recently came out with uh, Dr. Mark Bullimore and uh, Maria Lau. Um, I just mur I just we're mur not married. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you're not married. Um, but uh, uh, and Maria is uh, uh, perspectives where they looked at all a, a, a whole evaluation mm -hmm. of studies mm -hmm. that have been done on the Euclid lens. Mm -hmm. um, are, can you share a little yep. bit about what uh, came out of that study? Absolutely. So, uh, professors Mark Bullimore and uh, professors Maria Liu, uh, they did an analysis of all the literature that's in the peer-reviewed space studying uh, basically orthokeratology and slowing axial elongation. 
And so for those listeners who are sort of new to this game, that's the whole reason why we may be doing myopia management is to slow eye growth, slow abnormal eye growth. Yes. And what they discovered, and I had hints and inklings of this even prior to them doing this study, mm -hmm. but what they discovered was that Euclid is by far the most well-researched ortho-K lens in the world. Right. Not just the ortho-K lens field, but just the most researched optical device. Now in that the sounds world. like an opinion. What do you mean by that from, like, they, they looked at that, right? Yep. They looked at all of the studies that yep. related to orthokeratology. And slowing eye growth. And slowing axial eye growth. Mm -hmm. And um, what lenses were used sure. within those studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what they found was Euclid was used almost, or more than twice as often as the next closest uh, competitors mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, sheer research um, yeah so now it, is that because euclid is spending an exorbitant amount of money to sponsor these studies or is that because when studies have been done they've mm -hmm. just used euclid lenses by and large that's a great question so one thing that i'm extremely proud of is the fact that almost a hundred percent of these studies were not sponsored by euclid these were independent researchers using either government funds or institutional funds, and they chose and trusted to use Euclid, we have a reputation worldwide as a very, very reliable, um, very, very effective brand, and they know they're gonna get the consistency when they order a lens. So all these professionals, all these researchers trusted Euclid brand lenses to deliver for their results. And it's a great thing to know in the back of my mind because uh, where we practice, we have very, very well-educated uh, uh, parents who are in the tech field. And yeah. typically, they often come asking for information, whether it's yeah. literature, uh, science. And to date, there's not a lot of literature on the actual specific brands of products that we're using, yeah. right? This is one of the you know landmark studies showing that Euclid is effective in slowing down eye what growth. Kind of, what kind of... Effect, you say effective. They yep. they had some numbers with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, typically when we're talking about myopia efficacy or slowing myopia efficacy, we're talking about how much can we reduce the rate of eye growth compared to a person that didn't have treatment. So we'd call right. that a control. And the difference in that, some people call that the care value, mm -hmm. cumulative absolute reduction in axial elongation. It's a mouthful, um, but you can call it the care value. And basically they found this value was about 0 0.18 millimeters over 12 months and about 0.28 millimeters over 24 months. Now, what does this overall mean? You know, this is very much on par, if not better than a lot of major myopia management studies on other modalities. Yeah. So we know that we have efficacy results that support you know, what we do with Euclid designs. And given that we have this ability to prove to patients now that, hey, we're using not just you know, any random old lens or random lens design, we have support to show uh, efficacy, safety, all these things that are important to parents when they're thinking about a treatment for their children. So yeah. I think that's extremely powerful for my conversations with parents yeah. when I, you know, whenever I'm back in practice. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Especially when we can say it's the most researched lens Correct. by double. Correct. Awesome, man. Thanks for what you do. You're making us better. You're uh, driving the industry. You're uh, showing orthokeratology at a whole new level, introducing it to new people, working with uh, Dr. Johns in promoting scleral lens education as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're impacting more than 20 patients a day. I think you did it. I think it's been pretty impactful. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for having me on yeah. your show. This was actually, I was not expecting it to be fun, but that was oh, actually good. pretty fun. Good. So you're I appreciate a, the invitation. Thank awesome, you very much. Man. I love hanging out with you. Right. And thank you for hanging out with us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future episodes and consider the Vision by Design meeting 2024, October 2nd through the 5th in Dallas. Uh, Jackson and I are planning to be there and uh, it'll be awesome to meet you as well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. 
Thanks for listening to this episode. I want to again thank Team for their support of this particular podcast. Uh, they have been a great supporter of the Myopia community, helping to uh, make clinicians and offices run better, whether it's calling and scheduling appointments, whether it's answering the phone, helping with billing issues, scribing in the exam room, whatnot. Having a virtual team member in your practice is a real show stopper. So with that, I want to thank team again for their support. Check them out at hireteam.com. That's H-I-R-E-T-E-M.com or click the notes in the show description below. Thanks again to team. One, two, three, thank you for tuning in to the Myopia podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes. 